Good afternoon. The story takes place in a small Michigan town in 1944. The setting is an old building that once was a bus stop station and postal office. It opens in 1993 with Megan Michelle Appleby returning after being away for nearly 49 years. She soon discovers memories don't easily disappear over passing time. Yes, fans, it's 1944. World Series between two rivals jockeying for the big prize. It's game six between the sentimental favorite St. Louis Browns and the powerful St. Louis Cardinals. This could be it for the sweetheart Browns. There's a wind up. He mails Furman's bat as Blister now hit into left field, driving in three runs. From where I'm sitting, I can see Cardinal manager Billy Southworth jumping up and down in the dugout. It's over. Cardinals win. Cardinals win. They take it in six. The fans are going crazy. Look at those ball players. They're jumping around the diamond like a bunch of kids. Sam Musel and Marty Byron are jumping onto the pile. The ballpark is in mayhem. Finally score, three, two, one. I hope your father's hearing this. They won, JD, didn't I tell you? Stan the man and the cards are world champions. What time is it, Mom? A little after five, why? Is Mr. Prindle's barbershop open? I'm not sure, he probably was listening to the ball game like everyone else. What business do you have there? J.D. wants a haircut. He doesn't look like he needs one. I mean a shave. Jason, since when do you have Mr. Brindle giving you a shave? He does it all the time, Mom. Well, I... I... J.D., if we don't get over there, he'll probably be closed. Come on and put the broom down and let's go. Wait a minute, Maggie. Jason, do you want a shave? Uh, uh, uh Sure, Mrs. Uh, uh, Appleby. See, we can't waste another second, Mom. We'll be right back soon. Maggie, dinner will be ready about 6.30. I want you home before that. Am I understood? Yes, Mom. Come on, J.D., let's hurry. <phone rings> Marion's bus stop and postal service. Hello, Mr. Sterling. Yes. I'm fully aware of what date it is. No, I'm not ignoring you. Yes, I realize the importance of your letter and I'm doing the best to accommodate your request. But if you don't mind, things have been extremely difficult around here. No, I'm not making excuses. I'm simply trying to explain. Yes, I'm aware of that. I don't need to be threatened, Mr. Sterling. I, I won't permit you to use that type of language with me. Well, Mr. Sterling, if you insist. What a bastard. The front door opens with Mrs. Zona Goldberg entering. She is an elderly Jewish woman in her late 60s, conservatively dressed and carrying a paper sack of groceries to the counter. Hello, Mrs. Goldberg. Doing a little shopping at this hour? Do you have anything for me? Well, let's see. Golden... Gooden, Goldstein, Goodman. Don't you, don't you keep them in alphabetical order? Usually, but when I get busy, they often get times they get mixed up. I should be before Golden. You're perfectly correct, Mrs. Goldberg. I know. If you'll be patient with me for another second or so. I should be simmering my soup broth by this time. What's a hold up? I, I... I believe I'm the only Goldberg in town. Yes, you're perfectly correct on that, too. My chicken's thawing and going bad. Please, just another moment. Ah, here it is, behind Gunnison. How much do I owe you? Um, ten cents. The delivering date was eight days ago. Why wasn't I notified? I did call your house a few days ago and spoke with your son, Ian. What did you do that for? He's an idiot. That explains everything. 
She places a dime on the counter and turns to leave. Mrs. Goldberg. What? I have a delicious broth recipe for you if you'd like to borrow it sometime. Perhaps. As Zona opens the door, she is confronted by Mr. Werner Hesenberg stepping in the doorway. He's a German immigrant in his mid-fifties wearing an old pair of blue overalls, a dark brown coat and hat. She's frozen, staring at him, then quickly shifts her stance and walks out the door. He moves to the counter. Mrs. Appleby, have you seen my daughter, Greta? Uh, she was supposed to be home half, half an hour ago. Mr. Heisenberg, she was here listening to the World Series, but she left after the fifth inning. She said she was tired and was going home. No, 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 no. She's not home. Uh, if you see her, tell her I, I'm looking for her. I will. He exits. Patrice pulls an envelope from behind the counter. She removes a letter and begins to read. Within moments, Mrs. Marlene Marie Coolidge enters. She's well-dressed with an overcoat, nicely groomed, and in her late thirties. Hello, Marlene. There's nothing for you today. I was hoping it would have arrived. Well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow then. Would you like a cup of coffee? It's been a while since we've talked. Yes, that would be nice, thank you. Make yourself comfortable, I'll be just a second. Patrice exits into the back room while Marlene takes off her overcoat and sits observing herself in a small mirror, applying a dash of lipstick. Patrice enters carrying a tray holding two cups of coffee and a small dish of cookies. How is your business? Slow as always, but we're getting by. I couldn't resist bringing out some cookies. Greta is learning to bake and I must say they're very tasty. Here, try one. They do look good. Thank you. Be careful. The coffee was left on the burner. If you need a splash of water, just let me know. It's fine. Your husband is Captain Harold Coolidge, isn't he? Yes. I, I just want to be sure if anything comes for him. I appreciate that. My husband is currently in London waiting orders for God knows where. It's anyone's guess where they're going to send him. It has me so nervous. I have trouble sleeping at night and I'm just not used to sleeping alone. How do you do it? Sleeping alone? Yes. Do you ever wonder if he'll come home? When the army informed me that his B-17 was shot down over Germany without knowing whether he survived, a little voice whispered in my ear that he is still alive. I trust I'll see him again, but until I do, I too have lonely nights. What does that whisper sound like? It's a clear voice. But what exactly does it sound like? It's not so much a sound as it's a feeling inside. You'll know when you hear it. I have so many thoughts rolling around in my head all the time and I, I just can't tell the difference. You'll just know.